see a live demonstration of our Q-Protect platform. Uh, as Skip was mentioning, there are three independent products uh, that we have on the Q-Protect platform. One, uh, as you see at the top, is for Q-Protect web application security. That's for web apps and websites. Uh, we have Q-Protect network security for security between application uh, on different servers, as well as um, other network traffic between servers. Finally, on the bottom, uh, you can see Q-Protect core security. Uh, this is security that we are able to perform uh, in a post-quantum fashion for routers uh, that leverage uh, the SCIP protocol from Cisco. And you'll hear about that more actually uh, in the end of this presentation with Rebecca and Craig. Um, all of this is fundamentally underpinned by our Q-Protect orchestrator. Uh, this is our uh, management console that allows you to affect the cryptography on any one of these links uh, seamlessly, as Skip was alluding to earlier. Um, so with that uh, single slide of preparation, uh, we'll flip over now to the demonstration. So um, as I was showing you on the other diagram, um, the, at the bottom was our Q-Protect orchestrator. Uh, this is our graphical user interface, our GUI uh, for that orchestrator. So the orchestrator is able to show you every single post-quantum connection that is generated. Um, here, you're seeing the uh, the number at, per day that we're able to generate, as well as the specific type of cryptography or the post-quantum algorithm that's being used to secure those connections, right? So you're seeing here, Kyber 768, 512, 1024, uh, different key strengths of the, the Kyber algorithm. Um, and so too, do we support all round foreign NIST finalists? Um, and you'll see how easy it is to swap between them in just a second. Um, but a couple of other uh, things that we're able to gain from having this centralized management and orchestration is we're able to uniquely identify uh, and fingerprint each connection that's made as well as every device uh, that is creating that connection. We're able to see, for example, where uh, those connections are coming from, uh, the protocol is in use, uh, as well as the, the browser type that's being used to uh, create the session in case of web app security. So this screen here is our dashboard. It's our single pane of glass. All of these logs are created uh, in Splunk and can be queried um, on your own if you would like to create those and forward them along to your own SIEM SOAR programs. Uh, so again, this is uh, all about getting visibility into uh, the types of connections that are being made. Um, and if you drop down into our manage section, you'll actually be able to see the different types of uh, proxies that we've deployed in order to affect that cryptography. So um, you can see here that we have five different proxies attached to this orchestrator. Um, and these proxies, right, you're able to see the number of keys that they're generated, as well as the type of connection that is attached to it. You can see that we have both uh, web application proxies and network proxies here associated. Um, it's not to say actually that you must have a single connection type for proxy. Actually, the opposite is true. You can have many, many, many different connections. There, each one here only has a single connection for ease of demonstration. Um, and what's really amazing about this technology is that from this management console, we can go in and view and edit these proxies to, again, affect the type of cryptography that they use. Uh, here, you're seeing two different key encapsulation mechanisms. One is McLeese, uh, one is HQC192. And you're also able to determine how often uh, keys are rotated in the platform, right? So you can go every hour, every 30 minutes, every 60 seconds, every 24 hours, uh, the choice is yours. Um, and you can also determine the type of cryptography that's being used for a web connection here. Um, so in this example, we're using Kyber 768. And uh, this is, again, a live proxy that we have for you um, right here in the demonstration. Now, uh, what I want to take a second to do is I've shown you a lot of kind of the, the management side of things. I would like to show you kind of what this looks like from the end user perspective and the visibility that you get into those sessions um, with our software. So uh, I think you were able to see, right, that um, we, were, we were using a certain type of cryptography here. I'll show you first um, this, this web proxy that we have for our QBank application. You can see that we're using Kyber 768 for this application. If I go back to the dashboard, 
um, I'll be able to see that I've created uh, 301 so total sessions, and uh, Kyber 768 has created 252 of those. Um, first, I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, just to access the application directly. So this is not going through our proxy, right? We can come here and then we load in. Uh, this is a stand-in for the banking application you might use, uh, you know, to to do your own finances. Um, here, right, we've just created a, a notional one for bank.com. Now, uh, this is the, again, the non uh, queue protected version of this web page, but uh, it's just to show you, right, you can see that there's no protection here. This is just to show you what the web application looks like um, without any protection in front of it. Adding this protection is as simple as actually routing through one of our proxies. Um, and so what you'll see here is, uh, you know, we have our end user browser, in this case, it's my browser coming in, uh, accessing through the proxy and being delivered to the same receiving application, which is this application here. Um, so going back to the dashboard, again, I've created 301 total sessions because I haven't queue protected any other sessions. But if I come in here and I am now to visit this exact same web server, but doing it through our proxy, uh, what I'll be able to see is that um, I see the exact same web application, but now you can see that we have Q protect web active. And uh, if I come back to the management console, I will move from 301 total sessions generated and increment that to 302. And Kyber 768, which was our algorithm of choice, will increment to 253. So uh, you can see that here, right? So I now have 302 and 253 of them were with Kyber 768. Now, if I wanted to modify right, uh, this connection to be using a different type of cryptography, so say there's uh, some degradation in the security assumption of Kyber, and I want to completely move away from that algorithm, um, I can go in, again, in a live manner to that proxy or even at the level of policy right, um, and say, OK, um, I know I'm using Kyber here. I would like to switch to something else. Let's pick HQC. So uh, I'm now going to save this configuration, right? So I'm using HQC 192. Um, I will update that proxy. That then pushes a new configuration down to the proxy, also in a post quantum secure way. Um, and you can see that that update has already been absorbed. When I revisit the dashboard, again, I haven't created any new sessions. So uh, you wouldn't expect that anything is incremented. Also, you see no HQC anywhere um, here currently because we haven't yet used it. Um, and if I go to the exact same URL, so you can watch, I uh, will copy and paste uh, from that same URL. Um, I'll get the same splash screen as before, right? Queue secure, securing your environment. Um, however, this time when I actually go into uh, my management console, I'll still get an increment in the total number of sessions generated. However, this time, right, I will then see that HQC 192 has appeared. Um, so again, uh, we can now see that there has been a single session generated with HQC 192. And this ability to seamlessly swap between different types of cryptography is what we term crypto agility, right? Um, and it's flexibility not only in the key strength, of, as you've seen here, right, with Kyber, uh, you have all of these different key strengths. You're also able to swap seamlessly between different types of cryptography without needing to, um, you know, go back into those libraries and do all of that updating. Of course, all of this happens without code change to the application that's being protected. So that's great. Um, and, and this is um, a really efficient way to do this for web connections, uh, as I was showing you before, right? That's end user browser coming in the proxy and then eventually is a receiving application. Um, but what happens in the case of a network connection, right? So uh, in a network connection, this is now no longer a, a browser coming in. Uh, this is going to be a server um, that then goes through a, an initiating proxy, is upgraded to post quantum, again, transparently, runs over to a receiving proxy, gets decrypted, and handed back to the receiving application. Uh, so the link between the two proxies is post quantum. Um, and you would want to place these proxies as close to the sending and receiving application as possible, with the link in between being uh, the vulnerable portion that's being, for example, set o sent over the open internet. And you can see that we've done that here too. So the receiving application in this case is an SFTP uh, uh, terminal, and we have it on local host, right? So you can see that actually this receiver proxy and this receiving application is on the, the, the exact same server. Um, and so what does this look like in practice, right? Um, I will give me one second to swap over to my new 
uh, window here. And I will share with you um, now what Q Network looks like. So here um, I'm showing you a, a Q Network session that we've established actually. So this is a Q protecting uh, SFTP file transfer, for example. And you can see that I'm actually SFTPing into this AWS instance uh, where I'm accessing it on this machine, dot one fifty seven at port five thousand. Uh, here I'm accessing the machine natively on one sixteen port twenty two, right? A default for SFTP. And you can see too that the the file structure is the same. So this really is the same machine, and you'll see that even more going forward. Um, so if I then uh, change directories into this demo folder on both. Um, right, you can see that the the directory is empty here uh, as well as here, and then I can go ahead and drop, drag and drop. Right, I'm going to use FileZilla, right, a standard SFTP client to do this, um, to move those files, and you can see it's progressing nicely uh, over our post quantum protected version of uh, QNetwork SFTP. Here, uh, you're seeing that exact same file transfer natively into um, the the destination directory here. And this is uh, now able to see both, right? So one of these came from our QProtect SFTP. One of them came from our regular SFTP. Um, and the point here to get across is that I haven't modified at all FileZilla or the receiving machine. However, both of these uh, are able to interact with that machine in a, in a very easy way. And one of them actually is post quantum. So this is the capability of QNetwork, right? So if you think about um, different machines that may need to communicate with one another that need to do this in a post-quantum way that have to traverse a um, vulnerable link, you're able to layer this in with whatever uh, protection that you have today, right? SFTP obviously leverages its own encryption as well. And we're able to do this in a transparent manner such that all of your cryptography uh, can be guaranteed, guaranteed to upgrade to post-quantum without needing to uh, change any of your application code. So uh, that is it for the demo. Uh, thank you all for, for coming to see this. And